So for me, trekking is not only about conquering something or hmm. uh, an achievement, hmm. but more of a time for me to reflect on me as a person and to for me to understand what I want out of my life and my goals and my ambitions and my dreams. They say your attitude determines your altitude. Metaphorically speaking. When you have a positive attitude towards your passion and you want to work for it with whole might you ultimately grow by leaps and bounds now literally talking about this saying when you think of experiencing something serene calm and want to get back to the mother nature's womb the mountains are the first option that come to our minds isn't it welcome you're listening to one of india's top 3 motivational and self love podcasts women speria i'm riviti and i love to connect with people from all walks of life through my podcast seeking different dimensions of inspiration which will help us all to hold on to the rope of hope and keep doing what we are doing even though we may face ups and downs in life my guests are people just like you and me who tell us how they are living an extraordinary life in the crowd today i had the wonderful opportunity to talk with a really enthusiastic trekker anish In our conversation Anish tells us all about his journey when and why he started trekking why should one choose to trek and also tips and tricks for someone who is seeking to start trekking now let's get to know more from him so hello and welcome to my podcast Anish how are you i'm good how are you <laughs> i'm doing good thank you very much all right uh, to begin i ask my guests that what are the two affirmations that they say to their mirror every morning So Anish let's start you tell me the two affirmations that you say to your mirror every morning so i say the, the main two affirmations that i say to myself every morning one mm-hmm. is that the mind is stronger than anything in this world that yes. is that where where if you think that you can achieve something you can mm-hmm. and if you like have the determination the mental determination yes. uh, it overcomes anything yes that is one and mm-hmm. second thing is nothing is more important than happiness Yes. Do something that makes you happy. And if it doesn't make you happy, just don't do it. Yes. So and that's okay. That's not yeah. being selfish. Yeah, that's that's not being selfish. Exactly. All right. Okay. The first one I really liked it very much uh, Anish uh where you speak about believing. The, the first thing is about believing in yourself and making yes. your mind stronger because yes. you don't know what uh, what the strength of the mind is actually. That yes. is really beautiful. Beautiful. Okay so moving forward uh, Anish you tell me about yourself who is Anish Okay uh, so I, I was born in I was born in Mumbai and I've been traveling my entire childhood mm-hmm. uh, courtesy of my dad's profession and uh, uh, we settled down in Hyderabad uh, when I was in my 7th class and since then I've stayed in Hyderabad but I've traveled around India okay. a lot mm-hmm. uh, I am very passionate about trekking and mm-hmm. adventure sports mm-hmm. and uh, I'm a very outdoorsy person who prefers to go out whenever he gets the time. Okay. And I I enjoy traveling. Beautiful. So like any any type of tra- like any a, a short trip, a long trip, hmm. an adventure trip. Hmm. I'm in for it like always. Wow. So Anish is a very happening person. <laughs> I won't say happening. I feel <laughs> someone who doesn't like to travel is also a happening person. It's a yes. person's perception and what they want out of their life. So exactly. I prefer traveling than hmm. like sitting at home and like being to myself i prefer going out yes. but i feel both are happening people that if someone prefers staying at home they should hmm. if they don't they should go out yes but then again when you're traveling out you're doing something productive right yeah. at least for yourself yes. <laughs> yes okay so you told me that you love trekking and you like adventure sports yes. so when did you start trekking which was your wow moment like oh my god i have to do this i love trekking So which was your wow moment? So uh trekking I started in 2018 summer. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I went for my first trek as the Hamsa Pass trek. Okay. And I went with a trekking organization called India Hikes. Okay. Uh so I have started trekking since then and I'm still trekking right now like uh I even have a trek planned in January. Mm-hmm. Uh one of my wow moments was in my very first trek. Okay. So it was uh when we had reached the summit so hmm. it we realized that the summit view hmm. of hamta pass was not a very wow view okay but the entire 
journey that day to mm. that summit view was wow. Yes, yes. So like we all were thinking, why everyone has to do this trek? Like, what mm. is the great point of reaching that pass mm. point? Yes. So we realized that it is not about only the point of the trek. Like everyone emphasizes that when you reach a particular point, like that is the peak of the trek. Mm-hmm. That is the best view. Yes. But in that trek, it mm. was the entire journey. Mm. So that was a very wow moment for everyone who had done that trek. Okay. That it was such an amazing view that we got to see through the entire journey. Mm-hmm. As okay. compared to the peak. Mm. And another wow moment was when we uh, had completed the trek. So you go to this lake called Chandra Tal Lake. Okay. So it is. Uh, so you have to take a a tempo and go, or you have to go in uh, these cars. Okay. So we had an open car, and I and my trek leader was standing on it. So it was like a two and a half hours journey, wow. in which the entire valley opens up. Mm-hmm. So everyone was not standing; like everyone was scared that they okay. might fall off because the roads were not good. Okay. But that was an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And since then, I fell in love with the mountains, and I was like, I want to keep visiting this place again. Okay. So this was something really adventurous. Yeah. <laughs> so when you told me you love the journey uh, more than the summit. I was yeah. wondering, like maybe you had a good time with the people, but it's actually no. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. Actually, uh, so when we did, when we were uh, submitting that day, so that mm-hmm. was one of the most scariest experiences for me. Oh, because that was the, so. This trip was the first time that I traveled alone. Yes, I was oh. traveling without my family, without any friends. Okay, I joined a, a group of twenty people, mm-hmm. and I didn't know anyone over there before. Okay. And when we were doing the summit day, so mm-hmm. it was a very long day, around eight hours or nine hours of walk. Okay. With our backpacks and everything, and at a point for mm-hmm. a one-hour stretch, I could not see anyone in front of me or behind me. Oh wow! <laughs> and it's a very narrow lane, so like if something happens to you, mm-hmm. of course someone will find out that something's happened and they might try to rescue you. Okay. But it is still very like scary and. It kind it, of it was, enthralling experience, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it it was very nice. Uh, like because it was very peaceful. It was right. very peaceful, and you don't have much commotion, and it it's like you are to yourself. Yes, yes. Even though you are in a crowd, even though you are yeah. traveling with people. Yes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Indeed, that's a wow moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Anish, you tell me in India for beginners yeah. or for moderate level trekkers. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's have this as a message to them. Uh, any person who's seeking to start trekking. So you first tell me which is uh, which are the seasons that are suitable for trekking. Uh, we'll begin with that. Yeah. So trekking is possible in every season. It depends mm-hmm. on what you want out of it. Like if you want to have snowfall, because a lot of people who are not into trekking but just want to experience it for once, mm-hmm. always prefer to uh, experience a snowfall. So, uh, if you want to have experience that, uh, mm-hmm. and and you're a beginner, uh, okay. December, uh, November end, November mm-hmm. end, December, January, and Feb is the suggested time. Okay. And there are a lot of beginner level treks, which mm-hmm. are only only those treks are actually open during the season. Okay. Because anything from moderate to difficult uh, mm-hmm. are very dangerous during the season because okay. of snowfall. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to difficult treks. Uh, it varies like from moderate to difficult it varies on the season mm-hmm. like like hamta pass is a was is a moderate trek but mm-hmm. if you go in july okay because of the rains it becomes a very difficult trek okay because when it rains it's a bit difficult yes but but treks like now now there are certain treks which are always difficult and are open in only particular seasons mm-hmm. like the rupin pass or the goichela trek in india Okay. So those treks are of a higher altitude, so uh, a okay. trek difficulty also varies on its highest altitude uh, point. Mm-hmm. So, like the treks which we do in November end to Jan Feb, mm-hmm. those treks have a highest altitude of around twelve thousand feet, twelve thousand five hundred feet, and generally not more than that. Okay. But when we go to moderate, they can go from thirteen thousand till fifteen thousand. Okay. On a season, mm-hmm. but the Like we have around fifteen thousand five hundred or sixteen thousand feet. Those are difficult treks in India. Okay, okay. So normally, how many days do these take? So, Depending uh, on the person's potential. Yeah. Not exactly person's potential, but mm-hmm. it depends. Like if you are traveling in a group, like if you are going through a, an organization mm-hmm. or a community, mm-hmm. they have their fixed schedules in which they'll tell you that day one we're going to cover this, and all okay. the itineraries planned mm-hmm. out well in advance. Okay. If if you 
there is another option in which you can just take a local guide and hmm. depending on the trek you can cover it in that many days okay okay so it depends then it depends on your capability and how much you can push yourself to trek hmm 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 because the locals can anyhow do most of these difficult treks which we guys take 9 days they would complete it in less than 3 days oh wow yeah so hmm. it depends on the person who wants to trek that how right. much can they push themselves for it Okay. But when you go for basic treks, so there are some weekend treks also available, which are available all season. So like hmm. it's just a Saturday and Sunday trek or a Monday Tuesday, like just a two day trek. Yes, yes, okay. But if you go for the beginner treks in like the November, December, Jan, and Feb, they hmm. start. They are generally six days, hmm. which okay. include four day trekking and the two days of traveling to that start point. All right, okay. So uh, you tell me like, okay, I understand. a mental level of preparation is very much required for this yes. but physical talk let's talk about physical fitness how fit should a person be to even go for a beginner level trek so for uh, trekking i feel uh, fitness is the same from beginner to advanced mm-hmm. oh so it is so it is that if you're as fit as mm-hmm. you can run 5 kilometers in around 30 minutes to 40 minutes you're mm-hmm. fit to do any trek okay okay uh, is is that if you can do that faster like if suppose you can do a 5 km run hmm. and a 5 km walk in less than 30 minutes in less than 25 minutes mm-hmm. you're so fit that even a difficult trek is very easy to do okay 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 hmm. uh, but even if you have to do a beginner trek if you cannot do 5 km in 30 minutes hmm. the problem which you'll face in the beginner level trek is that hmm. you will you will be exerting yourself a lot Yes, 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 and that is something which you don't want to do in the mountain. Hmm. So, difficult trek is not uh, generally the difficult treks in India is not mainly on any technical skills in hmm. trekking, hmm. but mostly on more number of days okay. and a higher altitude. Hmm. So, if suppose we are doing a six-day trek for reaching twelve thousand feet, hmm. we'll be doing a nine-day trek to reach fifteen thousand feet. Okay, so you have the extra days. Hmm. So, it's like on this, you'll be exerting on the same level on every day. Yes, it's just that. After the twelve thousand feet, it'll be a more exertion because the altitude gain is very high. Yes, and you are exerting for more days. So hmm. the fitness should be the same. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Like someone who's doing a six-day trek should still be able to run five kilometers or hmm. walk five kilometers in thirty minutes, forty minutes. Yes, and the same for someone who's doing a a difficult trek. Hmm, 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 hmm. And they should have a good BMI. Okay, right. Hmm. Like so what is the suggested BMI? BMI? Yeah, below twenty-four is hmm, a suggested BMI, and above okay. eighteen or nineteen is. Okay, all right. You should not be overweight or underweight for trekking because it becomes difficult. Then you are straining yourself too much. Okay, yeah, all right. But then again, uh, when we started, you told me about mental strength. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <laughs> you were telling me that when the mind decides, everything is possible. Isn't it possible? But it's not possible in the mountains. Are you telling me that? <laughs> no, not at all true. Because I will tell you that. So hmm. uh, in in for that hmm. logic, the main thing is hmm. even if you are physically fit. Hmm. If you're not mentally strong, you cannot complete a trek. Of course, yes. And if you're not, uh, hmm. like, if even if you're mentally strong hmm. and you're not physically fit, yes. there is a possibility of you completing a trek. So it is in trekking. It's not mainly on your physical fitness, hmm. but it's on your mental fitness Correct. and mental strength. Because yes. uh, I can just give the same example of one of my experience in the recent trek hmm. that was Goa Chala, which I did in April. Mm-hmm. So I was Where not, is this place again? I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Where is this place again? Uh Goichela is a trek in Sikkim. Uh, okay. So so that trek mainly cover uh, makes us see the uh, world's uh, third okay. largest or sec- th- third largest mountain, the Kanchenjunga. Okay. Okay. Kanchenjunga and mm. uh, we get to view it from India. So that is the only view we have of Kanchenjunga mm-hmm. from India. Okay. And uh, so that trek is located in Sikkim. Mhm. So uh, when we did that summit uh, mm. uh, during that summit uh, on the la- on the day of the summit uh, mm. I I was not physically fit for this trek okay I I had done running but I was still not physically fit for mm. a difficult trek mm. but uh, I pushed myself through my mental strength and I could do it or else I would not have been able to do it okay okay so, so there are a lot of people in my team who have actually mm. done it on mental strength like I'm just a, I would I wouldn't even consider myself as mm. it was that difficult for me Hmm. but i can give an example of uh, one of the sirs who was with us who was hmm. of 60 years old mm-hmm. okay and he had done the trek with us he was in our team wow wow he was 60 hmm. years old and he pushed himself for it okay 
and and that's the thing which i'm saying that hmm. mental strength is the first most important thing in a trick of course hmm yeah all right so anisha moving forward uh, please tell us which are the uh, places in india which are the most uh, preferred destinations in india for trekking so almost all around 60 to 70% of our treks uh, is in uttarakhand Mm-hmm. and himachal pradesh like okay uh, most of the beginner level treks are in uttarakhand mm mm-hmm. which are the uh, the himalayan mountains over there are uh, of the beginner level treks mm mm-hmm. and if you go to advanced treks it depends on a region to region like goichal has an advanced trek which is in sikkim okay rupa pass is also an advanced trek which mm-hmm. uh, starts from uttarakhand and ends at himachal pradesh wow okay uh, there are other uh, advanced treks like stock kangri which is in ladakh mm mm-hmm. and we have a chandra uh, the chadar trek in ladakh hmm so depending on a particular trek uh, it, most of them are in the northern part of india hmm uh, and generally the most number of treks which you get for beginners are in uttarakhand uttarakhand all right yeah. okay okay so anish yes i understand you love trekking and you get a feeling of conquering something when you reach the summit all right yes. so yes. beyond this beyond the feeling of conquering this is something for yourself actually for the yeah. people something for what do you do i want something more i mean i am expecting something more what exactly what feeling do you get uh, beyond con- uh, conquering the uh, summit uh, like what kind so, of yes yes yeah, tell me for yeah. that uh, hmm. so for me trekking is not only about conquering something or hmm. uh, an achievement hmm. but more of a time for me to reflect on me as a person and to for me to understand what i want out of my life and my goals and my ambitions and my dreams okay so i i trek uh, with that passion because it's a time where i'm away from all the network no mm-hmm. internet connections no uh, noises of like cars or the city and it's like it's this place where i'm completely isolated with mm-hmm. a small bunch of people and i can choose to stay away from them because like, if i just walk 50 meters away from my campsite Hmm. I'm in a I'm in a forest or I'm in this uh, open valley with no one around me. Yes. So I I consider trekking as something which helps me reflect and understand okay. on the things that are happening around me and what I want to do or hmm. my goals for the next few months or years down the lane. And when I complete a summit uh, hmm. or when I reach the summit, hmm. uh, it's more than conquering the mountains. I'm more of like very grateful for the mountains wow. that they let us do this. <laughs> Mm-hmm. because we like people like everyone has this in their mind that when they go for a trek that they are bigger than a mountain or that they are more important mm-hmm. but what lot of people don't understand mm-hmm. is that we are able to do that trek because the mountains let us do it wow yes and we have to be grateful for that mm-hmm. and when i complete a summit it's just more of a satisfaction that i have okay i have done this mm-hmm. and i got to see this view more mm-hmm. than something that i have achieved Hmm. it's about the view that i get to see and i i always cherish that view because it is a very tough experience when you trek because trekking is not easy especially in the himalayas even hmm. though it is made easy now hmm. but it is made easy till a limit we still have to put that effort to walk hmm. to push ourselves through all of that and the cold yes the rain and all of those it, hmm. it makes us realize how good the life is when we are back at our houses correct <laughs> how comfortable we are living yes <laughs> it is such a like uh, it just gives such a good reflect like a reflection for us in our lives yes that we are very lucky for what we have like correct. not only in the mountains hmm. but also when we get back home hmm. to have a family to help us around yes in everything that we do yes for security Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a nice thing. So getting a uh, clarity of your of yourself and your uh, future goals when you reach the summit. That was a lovely uh, uh, rendement of uh, the purpose of your trekking. Uh, Anish yeah. loved it. Loved it. Okay. Okay. So Anish, uh, what message is your uh, your trekking group or your organization giving to people and how how do you stick to how do you uh, do not harm nature? as yeah. you told me because how do you express your gratitude towards nature because you told me the mountains help you to conquer it the mountains help you while trekking yes so how do you express your gratitude towards nature 
So uh, the trekking organization that I trek with is India Hikes. It is okay. India's safest and largest trekking organization. Okay. And uh, they have a lot of uh, other uh, like subgroups or sub organizations which work under them mm-hmm. for the betterment of people in the mountains and for the nature over there. Okay. So they have this program called Green Trails. Mm-hmm. So what Green Trails mainly does is mm-hmm. that uh, it causes uh, it it tells all the trekkers. Who okay. are coming with us in mm-hmm. in a particular trekking group? Mm-hmm. That whatever plastic we get, mm. we have to take it back with us. Okay. And we also pick up the plastic which has already fallen down okay. or thrown by other trekkers. So okay. the, the the plastic or the waste material thrown by other trekkers, which are not uh like supposed to be in nature, which yes. cannot get decomposed. Mm. Those waste materials, if we are willing to, we can pick it up and keep it in our bags. It's okay. not a mandatory thing. Hmm. But it is something which is inculcated to everyone okay. who comes with India Hikes. Mm-hmm. So, so we enjoy doing that mm-hmm. as a trekking group, mm-hmm. and we. So what we do is we do a sw- we sweep away the plastics as we go on every slope. Okay. As every trekking group. So, with that plastic, what India Hikes does is mm-hmm. that they make a lot of things. They utilize the plastic, mm-hmm. and they just don't dump it or burn it somewhere. Okay. They may, so, so they, so they have another. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Right? They have a subgroup mm. under them, mm. which works on how to utilize this plastic, and they have awareness campaigns. Okay. And guys, even in the schools in in the mountains or the vill- the villages near the mountains, mm-hmm. so that the people over there also do not litter, and they understand why they should not litter. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So sure. this is one of the most important things I feel in the mountain, which mm. has to have a lot of awareness. Yes. Is that a lot of people have to understand that. They are lucky to come to the mountains right now and hmm. uh, like lucky to enjoy and view and hmm. see all these things that they're getting to experience. Hmm. But they should even understand that they have to respect nature and respect where they are. Yes. And not litter it because if they litter it right now, like they just throw a a, a plastic pa- a packet over here and go, but hmm. they won't realize the hmm. consequences of each plastic pa- paper or wrapper Correct. that they're leaving. Yes, 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 exactly. Because so mm-hmm. much of garbage is there in the mountains right now, and it's mm-hmm. a very difficult thing to take it out oh. and to remove it. Yes, yes, because uh, carrying the required sources there to uh, yes. yes, that itself is a tough challenge. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, and for nature, it's always been giving. So yes, it's yes. time that it's high time that we started giving back, at least yeah. not destroy it any any further. <laughs> that is that is a very important thing, and I yes. think India Hikes is working towards it. And I feel a lot of trekking organizations are yes. also understanding that it is very important because mm. if if that is not kept in check, then these mountains will not have like people will not enjoy it when they go there because of they will be able to see garbage everywhere. And yes, mm. it is that's not how nature is supposed to be. Of course, of course, right, right, right. So it, it it's all upon us now. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes. Okay. So, Anish, tell me, which is your dream destination? Uh, for trekking? Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. For trekking. For, <laughs> so, my uh, like uh, my ultimate goal in trekking is that I want to do Everest without oxygen supply. Oh. Which is a very tough thing. Is there a history of that? Has anybody else yes, done yes, it? Yes, people have okay. done it. People have okay. done it. Uh, a few people have done it. Uh, mm-hmm. Less than 100, I think. Okay. Uh, it's a very tough, difficult task. So the people and the Sherpas who organize uh, trekking huh. over there, okay, uh, they can do it mm-hmm. because they are used to uh, that kind of uh, difficult trek. Yes, but uh, people outside have not done it that much. Like you have to be a very experienced trekker to hmm. take that chance mm-hmm. of doing a trek in doing the Everest summit without okay. an oxygen cylinder. Oh, wow. So all the best to you for that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Anish, uh, if you're trying to convince someone, not convince, I wouldn't say convince exactly. If you're trying to spread this message, like telling people that trekking is, how trekking is good for your sanity and how trekking is good for your physical uh, betterment, how will you convey this message to somebody? Uh so to convey that message, I would want to share a few experiences that we have uh, mm. when we trek. So lovely. Okay. When you so when you trek in a group uh, mm. and you're not trekking alone, there are a lot mm. of different advantages, especially when you go as a solo trekker. Okay. Because when you go as a solo trekker, you don't know anyone, and if you are uh, if you're not comfortable to reach out to people 
on a general basis hmm. this is something with which you are pushing yourself to that boundary because in trekking you cannot be to yourself you always need someone's help or you always need that warmth of people around you mm. because it helps you a lot yes and because you are in the mountains and you do not have any signals or anything yes. you have to for even to like spend time like if you if you're trekking 4 hours in the day mm. the rest of the time you're in the camp you'll be meeting people you'll be talking to them yes. you'll get to know their experiences their mm. lifestyles mm. and because india is such a vast country with so much of diversity Yes. you know so much about each person from a different region exactly yes true and mm. you learn so much from each person because like people are there of a different age group uh-huh. so i have trekked from a age group of 18 to 65 mm. oh okay so, mm. so there are people from so many different age groups and they have their own experiences in life and we get to sit down and share and uh-huh. talk and play a lot of games and it, it's a nice experience and Correct. on another side it helps you keep yourself in check because hmm. you're away from all this social media or the right like yes. the rush the traffic and all hmm. of that and you're hmm. in this place full of hmm. peace and hmm. no disturbance and you get a time you get this chance to reflect on your actions or you get a chance to like sit in peace and just meditate right right wow so there are so many positives of trekking and with trekking you even have this habit of getting more fit you get mm. you have a discipline of mm. keeping your st- keeping your luggage in a proper manner Correct. because you have to set your trekking bag every day when you're leaving from one camp to another mm-hmm. and you have to set the trekking bag in a proper manner or else the weight will become too unbalanced and it'll become difficult for you to trek yes yes wow and it's as simple as you start seeing life as one step at a time when you're trekking hmm Wow. So so many <laughs> so many principles that uh, trekking teaches you. Yes, so yes. you not only connect with the nature, but the nature teaches you so many disciplines that you can correct yourself about. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. And also uh when we talk about socializing, this is I guess this is the most organic type of socializing that you can do. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, yes. 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 So where people can be there themselves because uh, you get to meet people in their most uh, natural form I would say. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yes. yes. <laughs> because because the, yeah. in trekking you cannot act like you're someone else. You have Yes. To, you know, your true colors will always come out of yes. a person but it is always expected that someone who treks hmm. their approach to life and their outlook to things hmm. really because i personally changed as a person from when i started trekking to uh, before i was trekking wow wow that is nice that is nice and you opening about this is that, that's really beautiful <laughs> beautiful anish beautiful so may you conquer more more you uh, do more trekking and uh, more people be interested by you and by your journey and uh, they choose trekking as as a good socializing tool i would suggest yeah. and yes and also to keep their physical and mental fitness at check Yes, so and, uh, yeah a lot of people are scared about trekking in india i oh. feel uh, that is a very mm-hmm. big miss now where that mm-hmm. trekking is very dangerous yes it is a dangerous mm-hmm. adventure activity i would mm-hmm. say because it is not easy okay and yes if mm-hmm. you are disciplined and if you are with the right group mm-hmm. you will always find it very safe is there that a lot of people see a lot of news of avalanches and all yes and yes but that is in the non season hmm. so generally when you go to the trekking organization you are going in the season hmm. all these incidents and all happen to the people who stay local over there and uh, it is because they have to go for their daily activities their hmm. daily works that they have to face all these issues right but as a as a normal trekker who is like coming from the cities or towns hmm. you do not go to the mountains during those seasons because hmm. those seasons the government will not give you permissions Right, right, so right. Okay. A lot of people have this fear in their head that if they go for a trek, something can happen to them. Because mm-hmm. I have seen that uh, mm-hmm. with a lot of my friends mm-hmm. who have that fear that uh, I cannot do a trek because something will happen to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is very dangerous. <laughs> so this <laughs> is not like, not being well informed about uh, trekking. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Uh, that is a major problem. Uh, uh, we behind the fear of trekking in India. Okay. Yes. The people feel it's not safe because. Mm-hmm. Uh, every odd day you see a, a news of some avalanche in some 
part of uh, Uttarakhand or hmm. Himachal Pradesh hmm. 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 and everyone will get scared that it is happening to everyone who goes for a trek. Yes, <laughs> yes. That is not the case, but... That's true, that's true. Because until you enter something, uh, until you explore something, everything seems dangerous. Yeah. So once you get well informed, once you prepare yourself, once you want to do it, Nothing will be a challenge. Again, yes. uh, as you told me about the avalanches and the mishappenings that is happening, like a person when he is like, uh, if he had followed the discipline, if he had followed the uh, instructions that were given by the government or the weather reports, they wouldn't have faced this. Yes, things like this happen, but these are unavoidable. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> so nice. All the best to you, Anish. It was great catching up with you. Thank so, you. <laughs> so uh, may you explore more, may you learn more, and uh, I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy that in such a young age you got so much clarity with your life because <laughs> because of this discipline that you have been following. Yeah, <laughs> means I, I feel like everyone gets it. Uh, trekking hmm. people can do it from the age of twelve, and I, I've always I, since I knew that, like since I hmm. started trekking, I was always dreaming that. Why hmm. did I never trek before this? Uh, even recently in the newspapers, I read a four-year-old boy uh, has reached the uh, uh, the foothills of uh, I don't know if that if that's the right term, the foothills of Everest. He's from yeah. Dubai, uh, an, an yeah. Indian boy. Oh, I, I'm yes. not sure about that. That's, <laughs> yes. uh, that's the Everest base camp. Yes, yeah. uh, a lot huh. of people can trek. Uh, so, twelve years is the age for trekking solo without any okay. family member. But hmm. below that age, depending on the trek, you can hmm. go with your parent or guardian. Okay. Okay. So that is also possible, but yeah, I feel trekking has to be encouraged because a lot of schools also are following this now. Now, if you actually see a lot of IMs hmm. or management schools or organizations and companies are having programs in trekking hmm. in which they, as a group, go out as go out for a trek. Okay. It that is another way, another activity for them to correct, like get 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 uh, like out of the stress zones and. Hmm. Get themselves comfortable and like yes, yes, yes. Relax. Get, yes, get, getting out of your comfort zones. Yes. <laughs> that is the exact term. And also this pandemic period. Yes, it, 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 yes, it, it would have been tough. tough for you, right? Yes, yes. We, yes. we, we did the trek during the pandemic. Uh, the oh, Goichala trek. It was just before the second wave. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> my batch was, I think, the seventeenth of April. Mm-hmm. So we guys. Okay. Uh, were out of we 17th of April we went for the trek and we were back on 27th okay. and India was in second wave by then so wow <laughs> we guys had to like rush home and quarantine uh, and all places were on lockdown by then so oh. the thing was we did not realize that till we came back on 25th back, of right. April when we came into coverage mm-hmm. everyone's phones were like mm-hmm. just like uh, oh. beeping continuously with a lot of messages from families like oh. where are you how are you <laughs> <laughs> and all of that but yes. uh, luckily is our the, the organization in which we go so they mm. they always have a check on us so they have always been in touch with our families on our whereabouts and okay. uh, mm. they have ensured that everyone could get onto their flights and arranged transport mm. for everyone so that <laughs> we could reach our home safe lovely lovely that's good that's good <laughs> okay so all the best to you again anish it was great talking to you thank you <laughs> so, <laughs> yes it, okay thank you very much anish thank you very much for uh, coming to my podcast and giving so much insight about trekking and also breaking the myths about trekking <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah thank you very much again thank you yeah such great information and guidance from anish only someone who cherishes his passion so much can give such clarity to someone who is seeking to learn. Womensperia wishes Anish a great future and may he reach out to more people and encourage them to choose this not only for their physical strength but also to connect back with nature. To let me know how you felt about today's episode, do send me an email in womensperia at gmail.com. Womensperia pages can be found in LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. There is a Women's Media Tamil podcast as well in which you can listen to inspirational stories in Tamil. Apart from that, I have a podcast called Shashu and Amma where I converse with my child about everything under the sun. It is a fun podcast. You get to learn more and also you can listen to this with your children. So until next time, this is Ravithi signing off from Women's Media, Contagiously Inspiring. 
there is inspiration everywhere around you. Try seeking it. Thank you very much.